on any other generic type of an ME switcher um, that would cost typically another ME bank in the source substitution and so on. So, and here it's all done on the fly, straight on the AUX bus and off you go. From sold out arenas and remote production to high traffic platforms and live broadcasts, Kairos can manage output substitution on air with no compromise on MEs and hardware. This video explains various branding scenarios for the show using FX input on cross points and AUX buses. In this segment, we want to talk about uh, cross point branding and uh, output substitution. Now, starting on my main scene over here, which is at this moment black, I um, want to put in some footage here from eSports actually. And in my layer number one, I'm doing a simple branding for this background, which is done on a scene. Now, the cross point for this is going to be my Panasonic logo and turn this on uh, with the eSports element in it. And I want to put this into the upper right corner uh, for branding on that scene. Now, moving this with my transform, enabling the transform, saying I want to put this into 50% size over here, 50%, and then I will drag this into the upper right corner somewhere and just leave it there, just for a moment. Now, as we can see in the layout of the multi-viewer over here, multi-viewer number two, um, I have my main in the upper left corner, and in here I want to put in a new cross point called effects input, which I now need to create. Effects input also can be used for cross point branding. Now my effects inputs over here go into the drop down menu um, or use the keyboard shortcut Control N using my clip player number one again over here. And this clip player here needs to have an overlay. So these are the most common effects uh, which are provided for um, effects inputs. And there's some additional effects over here, like for instance also an overlay. Now the overlay here appears when I enable this with a black box in the, in the center because the default cross point is black at this moment. Now showing this off in the layout and where in this window I want to put in my new effects clip player. And we see um, the clip player with a black box in the center. And on this element, I want to change the source and click the source button over here, go for my stills and inside the stills using my fill in key using the Panasonic logo again, and you see it's branded on that cross point over here, now using my drag pad and move it into the upper right corner, and it's almost kind of the same of a result. However, when we're looking into the um, live view over here, you see this derives from my scene, which is a background, and putting a layer on top, and this is a straight cross point, which is branded with a graphic. Now, down the right hand corner, you see substitution AUX9. Go to my AUX buses and see there are also two columns of names. So these are the engineering names. And here I was putting the substitution AUX9 into it. So when you go into my name tag over here, that's why this um, under monitor display appears on my multi viewer because I labeled it this way. Um, AUX9 at this moment also sees main at this moment. But what if I don't want to see main, which has the composite already loaded. Um, I want to see the clip player instead. And again, I'm going to my source over here, picking up my clip player, clip player number one, which then also shows me the live view with a clean clip player. And again, over here on that AUX bus, I also has, have various um, abilities to make corrections or effects to it, apply effects to it, like YOE, RGB, lookup table, source substitution and whatnot. But I can also do an add effect saying I want to do another overlay to my AUX bus and enabling that overlay will appear a black box in the um, center of the image of my AUX output. Changing that cross point again to my stills, fill and key, Panasonic logo over here. And again, have some crop values over here and can simply use the drag pad and move it to the upper right corner. Just to make a difference here, I push this one in the upper left corner just to make a difference, a small difference. And again, going to my effects input over here and saying I want to put this into the center mark somewhere down here. But now 
you see three different techniques actually uh, in order to do various things. They all have the same result, but they're all happening on different areas within the switcher, saying this happens on the scene basis, this happens on straight on the input, and this happens only on the output. This scenario here for the effects input I would typically use for cross-point branding, let's say this is coach cam, this is POV cam, this is the observer position, and so on. So I would use this straight uh, on a cross-point basis. This I would typically use for a composite uh, technique uh, within the scene. And down here, probably for watermarking, uh, let's say making a channel ID and put it straight to the output, which is not part of the scene, it's not part of the input, but downstream, I put in this into the segment where I'm saying this is the label of this signal. Now from here on, um, let's have another look and loading my production again in here and saying I want to go into my scenes output again um, and check in my main output. In the lower right corner again of my multi viewer, I want to put in an element called the uh, split over here and then we see in the live view that we see the program part, we see the main preview part of this scene and down here we see substitution aux 9 again. Now, what if this signal here, which derives at this moment from clip player one, and this signal derives from clip player number two, is not allowed to be seen on this segment down here, because probably there's a POV cam one, POV cam two, and the opponent team uh, is not allowed to see what these guys are playing. Now, whenever I'm doing an effect in here, um, I wanna make sure that those outputs are gonna be replaced down in here. Therefore, we're going again to the aux bus section, and using my aux 9 substitution. And here I've added an effect called SAR substitution settings. Enabling the effect, unfold the settings, and I want to set the table. And here I determined that my clip player one will be replaced with the signal source from RAM player number six, and clip player number two is going to be replaced with RAM seven. In order to make such a segment, it's very simple, you add um, the option over here, which source you're gonna be replaced. Let's say I wanna replace input number two, and then input number two is gonna be replaced with input number five, for whatever reason, or any other source within here. This is how to set up this segment. So I erase this one, don't need this. I only wanna show this one over here. Now coming back to my scenes segment over here, in my main, and you see my left and uh, right element over here, I'm uh, going to my select page and we see the two cross points appearing. And whenever now I'm changing, uh, let's say to a, a valid cross point, let's come back to the aux segment again and let's have a look to the table. Rams, Rams six and seven are the one which are the replacements for this one. So as soon as I'm doing a cross point selection, let's say for instance, Ram one or Ram two, or any other cross point, doesn't really matter. Um, come into my scenes, saying here, I wanna pick my RAM number one, and then all of a sudden you see, there's the effect coming in onto RAM number one and RAM number two. So this is all valid and will appear on all the cross points simultaneously. The same is true when I'm going for my right box over here. So I wanna pick up RAM number three channel, and you see then there's another channel coming up in here. But coming back to my left channel, and clip player one is not supposed to be shown on my substitution output number nine and clicking on the clip player over here and on the fly, even though there's a zoom effect, a DVE involved in that, uh, it's been done automatically and replaced by Kairos on the fly. And the same again on my right box over here, just simply clicking on an invalid cross point for aux nine will be replaced on the fly straight to another cross point. Um, and this is the only thing what needs to be done for the operator, going to the aux bus, define the aux bus, apply the source substitution table, set the table, define the so-called invalid cross points and the replacements for them, and off you go. On any other generic type of an ME switcher, um, that would be cost typically another ME bank and uh, source substitution and um, bus coupling and transition coupling and so and so. And here, the only thing what needs to be done, it's all done on the fly, straight on the AUX bus to replace the cross point um, the way out specified by the table. 
Another segment for this would be also to have multiple languages um, on a program, saying I have a national language and an international language. And on my program side, I would see the national, and there I would see the international. All of this would be done automatically, handled by Kairos on the fly by simply selecting the cross point.